break. Um, now, do it. I have to take my shoes off for the pod? Okay, so I'm you're sure one everyone of the people that have done research. Well, I, I'm one of your good, good friends, and I follow you on social media. Oh. So I'm curious. I know the deal at this point. So is it, like, rude if I don't? This is up to you. People I'll don't. take it off. Okay. There you go. You're good. Now just be prepared for the DMs. All right. That's, that's good. I'm a catch, too, so I'm going to be flooded. You know, you're a cutie patootie. <laughs> I'm kidding. But, uh... I don't know if my feet are a catch, so that's the thing. Well, now, we'll how much have you decide. been? Now you are a good friend, um, but I gotta be honest, I don't listen to every full episode. You shouldn't. Be, <laughs> <laughs> you should have more things to do. But <laughs> I'm getting self-conscious now. All right, Reebok. Right. Actually, this is actually hilarious because I forgot that I was coming on this podcast. Okay. No, not that I didn't forget I was coming on the podcast, but I forgot about the whole feet thing while I was getting ready. Right. And I was like, oh, I'm out of matching socks, but it didn't cross my mind that I might take my shoes off. So I was like, oh, I'll wear, I'll wear <laughs> okay. different socks today. Who's going to know? <laughs> the whole gay foot fetish world, dude. Right. The one day I wear, well, it happens more than once. You're about to be all over Reddit. You have no but, fucking yeah, idea. Yeah, we got one Reebok, one Nike. So this is actually hilarious that I said to myself before I left. I was like, who's going to know? But uh, great to be here, Richie. Thanks for doing it. <laughs> of course, it's been too long. I know. How you been? Where you been? What, what's going on? You're all over the world. You're in a wedding in Sweden. Sweden, yeah. I think you went somewhere before that. What the hell's going on? Well, I got a yeah. The last couple of years, I've had a lot of foreign weddings, which are, if any of my friends see these, it's been the best, some of the best weekends of my life. But because you had one in Italy, but please I stop. Yeah, I've had I had two in Italy last summer. Of course, I turned down one in <coughs> Cannes, France. Unfortunately, I couldn't go, but I probably would have went if I could go. And then one in Sweden, and I had another one in Sweden in a couple of weeks that I can't go to. Like, these people are just, I mean, I love them to death, best weekends of my life. But right. I have one in Peru in November. Peru? <coughs> people, they're, they're from Long Island and Connecticut. And they're getting married <laughs> they're in Peru? Peru? <laughs> yeah. Why? They were like, Crazy. Uh, I don't know. It was like guinea pig? What the hell's going on yeah, over dude, there? Yeah, I don't know. Two whites? Two whites. A couple of the whitest people I know, probably. <laughs> really? Well, Connecticut, yeah, but Long Island, I don't know, could be... Uh, White could be MS-13. Right. I have no right, idea what's right, going right. on. No, pretty normal whites, but a lot of foreign weddings. And NWs. Yeah, NWs, as we call them in the yeah. biz. But, yeah, man, I don't know. I haven't really done stand-up, I told you, I think. Did I tell you? In, like, last few months, I've taken kind of a little said, breather. You texted me. You said, hey, what? Right. Oh, I'm yeah, back. that's right. I was I'm like, back. I didn't know you left. Yeah, I know. Exactly. <laughs> that's the funny thing about stopping comedy when you're not big. It's like, you just, nothing happens. No. No one knows. You just pick up exactly where you start Right. Off. It's like I didn't take a break. No. I just like, when you're not like getting booked places on a regular basis, like weekly, people are just like, oh, you maybe. just experience s-. life. Yeah. You're like, yeah, I've taken off to be fun and just like be exciting. Right. That's the funny thing though. Like you tell people you like took a breather and they're like, oh, I didn't even know. I was with Tobin last night. I was like, oh, well, Regan's back. He's like, oh, I didn't know he left. Yeah, exactly. I was like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, like last four months taking a breather, just uh, which has been nice. I needed a little. I'm a big. I've done this a couple times where I take like a couple months, just reset. Right, and, you did uh, a little summer break. <clears throat> right. Well, it gets very oh. discouraging, Rich, as you know. <laughs> I've, I've, I've been doing this since as I'm we all, yeah. as we all know. Yeah, it's very discouraging. So sometimes you just need a little reboot. Uh, but now I'm back, and I'm like excited to be back. I was getting very. Oh. It's very getting very drained and discouraged, and it's like when you do something for. I mean, I've been doing it seven years now, so it's like when you do something for seven years and you're good at it, yeah. and you have like a you know this a- an album out. Luck, I was fortunate. No enough, big deal. That I was fortunate enough to get you know get an album and did you know decent following, and like you have all the things that you're supposed to get you to the next level, and then you're like still begging to do spots places. You know, and like you can't get any regular spots. It just gets discouraging. Well, what what is the next level? Right, there is none. What now. is what are I we doing? Know. This that's what I started getting around. I'm like, what am I even? It's very yeah. It's a crazy business. It's well. And so you're like, listen, I'm going to put this on pause. I'm going to go to Sweden. Right. I'm going to experience midsummer. Is that what you were doing? Yeah. Is that mids- what was around that? Yeah. So it was my friend's wedding. His wife is from Gothenburg, Gothenburg, okay, and that's, uh, a, that's a city there. Yes, okay. and we went, ate some herring, had a I couple. I mean, of course, right? What are you supposed to do? I'm have not a cheeseburger. A, I'm yeah. not a monster. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, man, I'm back. Feels good. I'm hopping right back into it. I'm a little nervous. I haven't performed anything in a while, so well, there's no expectations here. <laughs> there's zero. 
But uh, but yeah, I did a good old uh, did a mic last week, which was just as disastrous. Oh, you're as doing I remember. open mics. Well, I just like hopped back because I was like, I haven't done anything in a few months. Like, let me just go do a mic, get get the rust off. Okay, you know how'd that go? Um, it went fine. It was actually kind of like riding a bike a little bit. Yeah, you. Don't like after a couple minutes, I was like, "You're just a funny person." Fine. Yeah, yeah you're but like, okay. it was still like a little. You get the nerves back a little bit, but uh. Any yeah. crazies? I haven't done a mic in four or five years. No, I and you know I was never a big mic guy. Even you in hate the, mics. I hated mics. Um, I never did a bunch of them. I would just like take a week, couple weeks off. I couldn't do stuff. But uh, I, dude, there was one. I don't even know this kid's name, but you know what I hate most is like yes, people who they they're like open micers. Yep, who are like giving advice to other open micers. It's fantastic. I there was this one kid at this open mic who was like chirping this kid so hard for one of his premises. I'm like, who do you think you are, <laughs> buddy? And then he went up and bombed. Yeah, it's like I hate. Oh man, comedians. I love I love most of you, but no. See, I hate all of them. Yeah, I hate like 99.8 percent of comedians. So I'm yeah. open to talk. Unless to you want to book me, then I don't hate you. But, I still uh, hate you. No, I'm kidding. But I'll still take the book. <laughs> but yeah, dude, it was just like. It, I, I hated being around that vibe again is very like annoying. Like the, the open migrants who think they're really good whole scene is just like a disaster. Oh, the delusional confidence. Yeah, the, the DC, right? The, the DC, right. And we're not talking Diet Coke here, no. folks. Um, but yeah, man, I don't know. Good to be back. What the hell you been up to? I fucking, this is all I do. I do this Yeah. and I do some sets. And that this is my life. No, I do limited amount of that. <laughs> Imagine if you said you're like, I do this, I do some sex. It's no big deal. I probably haven't noticed the bed's a little My blanket's wrinkled. a little out of whack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I slept in. You said it you you ruffle up your pillows every time before a guest comes over for the party. Oh, I'm sorry about this. It's just so much sex. <laughs> <laughs> I just hock loogies onto the sheets. I'm like, yeah, it's Oh, that's oh, oh, wait. Oh, I didn't. You were supposed to see this. <laughs> you spit on your own bed before guests comes over. Like, Sorry, that's cum. <laughs> I actually borrow someone else's sheets and put them on my bed. <laughs> <laughs> you go to your neighbors for me. Like, you been fucking by chance? You been fucking? Hey, Rich, I'm your na- I've been hearing you guys a lot. You might yeah. borrow your sheets. <laughs> I got someone coming over. Want them to think yeah, I, I bang. It's, what a, it's a studio. They're going to see the bed. Uh. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> Spitting on your own sheets to make people think you fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've been having a cold for the past two years. <laughs> just so people think. Oh, that's good. That's permanently sick. Oh, man. You're a singleman. I'm still, a singleman. Are you not? Yeah. Singleman. I like it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Singleman. I'm a singleman. Um, had a girlfriend like COVID ish, like a year, a little over a year. It was a real year. quick relationship. It's like a year, it's like a little over a year. Really? That yeah. long? It was during, it was literally during COVID. It was like... The perfect relationship. It was like right before COVID to right after COVID. So like we started, it was like November 2019. So we had like a few months normal, then or like January, February 19, 2020, whatever. So a couple months normal. And then I kind of dated a girl like this past year for like four or five months. But that was a few, ended a few months ago. So yeah, I'm a single man. What How about f- you? I'm, a, I'm a single man. Okay, no, I, I interrupted. Here's my question. No, go on. This, we have time. Here's my question, Tom. What is like, because what's a four to five month relationship consist of? I've never had one. I've see, had hookups. See, this not a relationship. Very funny you say this. I hadn't either till this point, mm. which was very interesting. I've either like go on dates. I go on a lot of dates, a decent You're a amount date of dates. Guy. But it's like I either end up all like hook up with someone a few times. Yeah, and I'm like, eh, I don't, I don't think we're gonna date, but maybe we'll hook up a few times. Or everyone I've ever had as a girlfriend, it's either it's it's either like been one or the other. Yes. Until this, which was like, and I've always heard people talk about like, oh yeah, I dated for like four or five months. You know those relationships where you date for four or five months? I'm like, no, no I don't. I have no idea. That so this is. one was interesting because it was one of the ones that like just. It was so, the old first time. I'm 32, and I think it was the first time where like something just didn't work out. That That's I, nice, though. It was interesting. Wait, what does that mean? It's the first time something didn't work out. Because that, like, like we said, it was either, like, I'm hooking up with people not expecting to date them, or the other people who have had his girlfriends, like, been three of them, has, yeah, have, ended up my, have ended up my girlfriends. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? There's never been one in the middle where it's, like, gotten to, like, five months, but didn't. 
amount to a girlfriend. But like, what does it mean to like not like? I well, understand we hang out. Like, if you come out, we'd ha- you know, you hang out a couple times a week. You're like seeing each other a lot. Do yeah, just like your date. You're not just going on dates. You're like hanging out a lot. Sober, I guess, is a good indicator. Okay, well, I think that's a good indicator. I don't. I think that means you have a drinking problem. <laughs> No, but I mean like not going out grabbing drinks. Like no, I understand. Yes, I, I understand what you mean by that. Yeah, yeah, you're right though. That is a funny way. To <laughs> like, no, a way to, de- <laughs> to decide That's if you're funny. actually with the girl is: Am I drunk the whole time? Oh well, yeah, a substance that makes this better. Right. That's pretty funny actually. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I think that's a good indicator. Whether it's like you're not planning a date, you're like, oh, like just want to come over, hang out. I'm like at like 5 p.m. on a Tuesday or something. That's what you're doing. But well, like, you eventually, if you, you're dating someone, you're like, yeah, you want to hang out after work or something? You know? Yeah, but you, what do you do? You just sit there? You're like, what? You, what do you mean? What, you like, you've never hung out show? with a person? Not really, no. Yeah, you no. go hang out with them. I don't the know. Maybe you grab dinner, then you go home and hang out and bake cookies. I don't know. God, I'll be honest. That sounds fucking terrible. No, not actually bake cookies. We did make cookies once, actually. To- but, uh, Toll House? <laughs> make it from scratch. So good. So good. Unbelievable. But, uh... Yeah, yeah. I think that's a good indicator when you start hanging out, like not just going on dates. Okay. Like, like you had a girlfriend. Yes. You've had girlfriends. So when you started having, like, officially dating the girls, you didn't just go out with them on dates. You no, hung I really out. Only had one actual girlfriend. Yeah, and like you would hang out during the week. I assume. No, because she lived in Syracuse with her parents. Oh, for four years. Okay, well, that's very different. Yes. <laughs> so that's why I'm interested in this okay, four to five month gotcha. relationship uh, lifestyle. Okay, well, I think it's like the first maybe couple months you're going on dates and like it's pretty casual. Then maybe like month three, four, it starts turning into like, yeah, you hang out like maybe outside of like a so what, bigger like, plan like that. You're just like Saturday. You uh, you get coffee. You go for a walk. Like is that? What yeah. You're doing? Like okay. maybe hang out Friday night, sleep over, and then it's like okay, oh, you want to okay. go out, get breakfast, walk around. Then maybe it's like ah, oh, you doing anything Tuesday night? Like you want to come over, watch a movie. It just because when you get more comfortable with someone, you don't need the formality of like a let's go grab a drink or go out to eat. You know. Yeah, I don't know. It just sounds it sounds fucking terrible. To well, me, that's I'll what having honest. a girlfriend is. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Four, I mean, Syracuse for four years long distance is wild. Took that Amtrak a hell of a bunch of times. Shout out Amtrak. Yeah, okay. I actually would like to unshout out Amtrak. Okay, you like to whisper Amtrak. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'd like to whisper Amtrak. I'd like to sign Amtrak. Okay. Um, Braille, if possible. Oh, um, wow, you hate them. Uh, their Wi Fi. It's bad Can we Wi-Fi. talk about it's the bad Wi Fi? You'd think they'd have it figured out by right. now. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's 2024, and it's what? Th- it's the fakest. <laughs> 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 Being surprised by the year. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> oh, that was good. Yeah, dude. Hate hate it. It's like every single time just doesn't even come close to working, and it's a very popular train. I don't think it's that popular. I'll be honest. I mean, you take it to go home. I assume. It's popular because I use it a lot, I guess. Yeah. But a lot of people use it. The trains are full. Trains are... It shocks me every time I take it. Buy stronger Wi-Fi. I don't know how it works. Buy a high... Connect it to a higher tower. I don't know how science works. Call Elon. I don't know. Isn't that his job? Is to get (laughs) us Wi-Fi? Right. He got to a tribe. He can't get it to the fucking Bridgeport train station. What are we doing here? But... But... uh, Amtrak's a nice ride, scenic, like back to Boston. It's a nice ride. Beautiful on the water. Beautiful. 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 It's beautiful up to Albany. Albany to Syracuse, not so much. Well, those but are two tough cities. Uh, listen, and you stop. Well, Syracuse I've actually never been to, but Albany, my God. Oh, please. Albany makes Syracuse look like uh, <laughs> Troy, New York. <laughs> it's another city. Utica. Also not a great city. No, all these are terrible <laughs> cities, Tom. Right. Okay, Rensselaer. So, yeah, we play, I used to go up to Troy. Played RPI in hockey. That oh yes and okay so you've been to Troy. Uh, Troy Schenectady where yeah. Union was. Shout out Union dude. Yeah. National champs 2015. <clears throat> yeah. I think. Uh, no, I think you're right. Colgate. You be- Colgate. Yep. Yeah. That's a nice little town, Colgate. But they have a real shit bagel store. I went with my ex there. Fuck Waited that store. three hours for a bagel. Three hours. It was a long <laughs> wait. What are they fucking? 
I, I, I was going to say something anti-Semitic. Go ahead. <laughs> What's, I think we're over 10 minutes. Yeah, we're over 10 minutes. The algorithm that's doesn't the, pick it up. That's the barrier you have to get across. Mm-hmm. No anti-Semitic comments before yeah, 10 no minutes. No cursing or anti-Semitism until after 10 right. minutes. Right. That's what I've... Yeah, or wait for the page, and then we can really get into things. Right, right, right. Uh, uh, tell me more about this three-hour no, she would uh, She would take me on these tours of upstate and try to like sell me on upstate, which it's a tough sell. Because that's upstate. It's a tough sell. It's Austin. <laughs> That's a tough She sell. lived on 50 acres of land. Okay. They had snowmobiles, like snowmobile uh, streets, like only for snowmobiles. So the opposite of Manhattan. Yeah. The opposite. Um, now, I mean, we don't need to get too personal here, but Filming why? Out. I was just curious, why? How did you? I mean, we, we don't have to talk about this on the podcast. We could talk about but it. But I'm just saying, like, how did you meet her? Why did she stay in Syracuse? What was the... Well, listen, we, I'm still trying to figure out why she uh, wouldn't leave her parents' house. Right. Met in college. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And then recon- she, I ran into her at Jets game. She was dating a guy. You broke up with that guy and started coming down to the The city. old rekindle. The old rekindle. The O-R-K. The old rekindle. There we go. And then, uh, yeah, just dated for uh, four years. and <laughs> I remember. I, I don't think I ever met her, but I remember you dated her for yeah. quite some time. And then Syracuse. she's got a whole bunch of uh, emotional problems. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, just, oh, was a, me, just a bad partner. <laughs> yeah. No, the girl, I mean, I've, uh, the last girl I dated was a real doozy as well. What does that mean? Just like I've learned a lot about... Uh, Attachment styles. Ooh. Did you, are you familiar with these? I didn't know there were different styles. So, apparently it's big in the zeitgeist now. There's these attachment styles. What does that it's mean? It's like there's anxious attachment, okay. which is like you might act a little like needier and be anxious towards someone. There's like avoidant attachment, which is someone who likes being alone, can't commit, fear, fear of commitment. Gotcha. All that kind of stuff. And there's like a couple other ones. Right. But it was a classic. We're talking about women or dogs here. Right. Yeah. I don't know. So I learned a lot about that, and it's just a whole thing. But it's actually interesting. I've learned since you s- we talked about like never having these four or five months relationships before. This, I learned so much about myself from this one more than any, o- any other ones, which is interesting. Okay. What, you, this was an insightful relationship? Yes. Learned a lot about myself, a lot about other people and women and all that kind of stuff. Because I haven't had... A ton of I've had two serious girlfriends, and like no, like I said, ones like didn't work out. So it gets you thinking. Like just got me thinking in a lot of different ways. It's pretty. Uh, sorry, this isn't very funny, but uh, no, listen. Sometimes <laughs> it's what it is. How'd you meet this uh, lass? Just through a friend. Through a friend. I but, love uh, like through a friend. Right. Isn't back, that nice? Are you back on the apps? Um. Oh, I'm deep into the apps. So let me tell you, Tom. They're terrible. Yeah. See, our thing ended, and I, within 24 hours, I bought a Hinge Plus and Bumble Premium for $60 each for three months. Oh, wow. Yeah. Within I was just like, 24 hours. Just, you know, it hurt. You just want to move. You're like, I got to get it. I got to move on. So, like, the next day, I was like, but I was just, my wow. thumb my thumb was exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your carpal tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> You're wearing a fucking bowling brace on your hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just re-download the app. <laughs> yeah. Just down, re-download and hinge. I'm on like I'm in a wheelchair somehow. <laughs> Has no- <laughs> nothing to do with my hands. I'm somehow in a wheelchair. Yeah, I've also been jerking <laughs> off a lot. I'm, I'm real chafed. <laughs> like, Tom, you came to a car accident? What happened to your hand? You can't walk? <laughs> in a neck brace. <laughs> yeah. It was like, what is You're this? You like guy Christopher doing? Moltisanti, you just have the sunglasses <laughs> yeah. on. It's like, oh, he re-downloaded Hinge. It's like, well, how? <laughs> oh, he probably did the $60. You did the $60 the premium, premium membership. Right. Another guy comes in the room with a neck brace. It's like, oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Hinge. Yeah. It's like getting Hinge on a premium. Turkish uh, airplane. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you got it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Right? Dude, I might do that, by the way. You're going to do the Turkish airplane. So, uh, yeah, I got a little. I mean, I don't have to take my hat off. Maybe people want to see. It's I got a little receding. A little receding, a little, little bald in the scalp here. My brother just got one done not in Turkey, in Boston. Mm. Very expensive in America. If anyone's looking into this, I'll give you a quick rundown. Write this down, gaze. Extremely expensive in America. Like my brother's, I think he, it's like 10 grand. And then there's like a better, ver- there's 10 grand for like, it's called the strip where they like take a patch of your hair. Then they 
redo it. And it's like 16 grand for individual follicles that they move. That's how it is. They literally move follicles from the back of your head to the top of your head. I thought they take it from a different part of your body. N- yeah, no, they take it from the back of your head follicles, put them on top. Wait, so you'll just, so, okay. So you'll lose the hair in the back. No, but then it so- regrows. So well, how does that work? I don't know. But it's something about they take follicles, or maybe it doesn't regrow. I don't know. But they take follicles from your head, put it on top. In Turkey, it's like five grand compared to like 16 grand. Do you think it's it's so popular in Turkey because they're just, they have so much hair there? (laughs) Right. It's like like their whole body. Follicles. Right. Right. Well, apparently it's like government subsidized there. And like they, they like invented hair transplants. Like apparently it's like actually like the Mecca. For trail no pun intended. Yeah, right. Uh, so yeah, I might, I might do that in the fall. TBD. Really? Do yeah. it in the fall. Might just pull trigger on it. You know, it'd be great. Wedding in Istanbul. You do it then. Right. I'm sure I'll run into one. I'm, I'm sure I'll get invited to, to one. one. Right. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll look into that. How the follicle work is in Lima. While I'm down there. But uh, yeah, that's another update, I guess. Okay. Yeah, dude. No. Well, I mean, I talked about it last episode with the great and powerful Mayhil Patel. Shout out to him. Yeah, he got a bunch of DMs from you guys. Uh, these apps, they're... Uh, oh, yeah, back to the nightmare. apps. It's a nightmare. And it just gets exhausting, like... Well, first of all, just the formality of, like, the, hey, hey, where I'm you trying live? to come up with, like, witty things. I know. I just got one right before you walked through the door. Match? Whereas, yeah, I, I sent a text. Nice. One of the... Something, she had something about, like, the Oilers. Right. Like McDavid, yeah, the yeah. Really fucking McDavid. So I sent something uh, cute. Nice. And she was uh, 25 years old. Listen, yeah, you're good looking, but God, are you? Like, are they all autistic? What happened, right. Tom? Well, it's a different generation, really. It's, it's five years younger. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. It's. Uh, you try to talk to them, and you're, I'm like, I, I, is, it the app? is it the apps? Well, I feel that like, brings them. Also, is there anything a big? Is there a bigger bummer than when you have like a killer response to a prompt and they don't match with you? There's I had such a good one the other day. I forget what it was, and I was like, "She's gotta match me after that one." Nothing for sixty dollars a month. You should be able to reply. Right, right. You should be able to fo- a follow. You should up. do a follow up, a hinge follow up. Yeah, we could do it. In, I mean, what's hinge but sales? Yeah, right. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, dude, it's uh, it's exhausting. I think everyone's sick of like just the. Well, the problem is now, Fill and me in. this is like just dating in general, is that it's like you always think there's going to be something better because we're now intrinsically like used to just being like, ah, eh, no, no, no. So, like back in the day, people used to, people knew like eight people in the 1920s. You knew like the people on your street. And you were like, I'll make it work with one of them. And you got married. Now it's like the opposite where it's like you have so many options. You can get, you can be picky about the smallest things. So if one tiny thing is wrong on a date, they're like, eh, there's probably someone better. Swipe, 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 swipe. That's, I think, the issue. So you're saying we need to find a sweet spot between eight people. And and swiping everyone in America. Yeah. Yeah. Million dollar idea. There's our new app idea. You have something here, Tom. Now, how do we do this? How do we find the middle of this this Venn diagram? (sighs) Because I, I'll be honest, I go out, I try, I went to the West Village, you're a big West Village guy. I live in Greenwich Village. Yeah. I feel like that's just Hinge in real life. It's like Disney on ice. Right. In <laughs> I'm what like, way? I'm getting the same experience here. You're all autistic, you're all very good looking. Mm-hmm. I can't hold a conversation with any of you. Maybe it's me, I don't think it is, but that might be just Well, we're also both something. very mature people. We're not though, Tom. <laughs> 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 I think we actually not. are. I think we are mature, like as I don't know. There's a lot of idiots out there, but they're them, right? That's what I'm saying. So we're too mature and smart and funny and cool for them. I mean, well, listen, that's what my mom says. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, she still t- sends me texts every day telling me how special I am. That would be well. Shout out to Tommy's mom. That might be a no, good. No, she doesn't. Idea. But you should. But you should. We know you are because I am. Have everyone's moms run their dating profile. Interesting. Do you like this? Yeah, I do. Um, so, like pictures of us, but our moms do the talk. The talking. They do the swiping. 
We'll have to figure out who they does could the do talking. the swiping. They could do the swiping. But, but they, I feel like they would not bad. know who to choose. Yeah, my mom couldn't be worse at choosing. No, because they think differently. Yeah, obviously. I mean, obviously, my mom does. She'll be like, I work with uh, this girl, and it'll be like, oh, fucking ten out of ten. I'll be like, oh yeah, very attractive. She's like, yeah, she's married with three kids. <laughs> I also work with this one, and she has like one tooth hanging out the side <laughs> of her face, and fucking seven eyebrows. Yeah. and she's like, she actually just got out of a relationship. Yeah, I could tell. Yeah, <laughs> of course she did. Uh. Yeah, man. Very tough. And then it gets, I mean, we're chivalrous men. It gets expensive, too. That's another factor here, Tom. Sometimes I'll go on a tear. I'll be like, there's, there have been stretches where I'm on like a date a week, new date, for like a few months. Date a week's good. It's like a 150 bucks a date. 100 bucks a date. Where are you going? Do you have, I'm trying to open my rotation. Well, maybe not I've 150, a but, well, here's the thing. If I'm going out on a date... Um, you know, I'm getting a, I want to look cool. So I'm getting a cocktail. I'm getting an you old fashioned. I'm getting an old fashioned. Those are $18. Even during the summer, you're going to do an old fashioned. What, what do I get? A slush puppy? <laughs> I wouldn't hate that. <laughs> I wouldn't but, hate that. Hey, do you want to go to Coney Island and get a slush puppy with yeah, me? you want to go to a public pool and get some, <laughs> get some curly fries and a slush a, puppy? <laughs> I'll bring some nips. Go to a public pool and get a rocket pop. Whoa. See, that's what I'm looking for, Tom. Where are you fucking chicks? Yeah. Yeah, man. It's exhausting. So you do an old-fashioned. But I would like to meet out someone out in the wild. There's a meat cute, you know? A meat cute. Or a meat hot. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I never really know what the difference those. is. But <laughs> yeah. Meat hot, that's what they're doing in Khan. Uh, You're not going to that wedding. No. You ever meet someone at a wedding? They always say meet someone at a wedding. You it's the can't. most overhyped. Everyone's paired off. The it's the worst. most it's the biggest myth in the world. It's the biggest myth ever. I go to weddings, I just end up like blacked out, like circling the tables, eating scraps at 3 a.m. <laughs> like, Which is a f- yeah. pretty fun time. Yeah, right. Everyone else is slow dancing to fucking Sarah McLaughlin or whatever. <laughs> what, they killing dogs? Yeah. <laughs> These weddings you're going to? I don't know why that. <laughs> yeah, why was that the first example? I just thought of like slow songs, and then I went real dark. Um, but yeah, man, I don't know. I really would like a a wild a meet out in the wild, but you know they say it happens when you least expect it. So you maybe just turn your turn our brains off to it. I'm waiting. Well, that's what got me in my last relationship. <laughs> a rekindle in the wild. Boy, did that waste four years of my life. Yeah. How often were you going up there? Good amount, Tom. Every other weekend, maybe? Not to that extent. I probably once go month. like once, a, once every other once. month for a week. And then she comes oh, out. But then she got a job down at the World Trade Center when I lived in Fidei. And she still didn't and she still wouldn't move what? around. And dude, it's insane. No offense if you're listening, but that's abs- Last year, the relationship didn't see her for six months. She had to study for a test. She wouldn't tell me when it was. That's absolutely insane. She wouldn't though. tell me her salary when we were like talking about it's moving weird. into apartments. It's and weird. by the way, her salary is on glass door. <laughs> yeah. Like I know what it is. Yeah. <clears throat> wow, that's wild. Oh, we got stories, dude. That's we crazy. Got stories on top of stories on top of stories. Well, listen, we, yeah, you really try, and it's just easier. I've been working on it on stage mm-hmm. about I rather have been with someone I knew I didn't really like than try to find someone else. Wait, say it again. You'd rather I'd rather be with someone I know. I don't really like Uh huh. than to go into the wild okay. and not know what the future has. At least so you'd rather date I knew someone what you don't I like. had. Okay. Wait. Like, I get why people stay in bad relationships. And okay. Because you're afraid to go back out and find someone Because they're so predictable. Right. I knew whatever I said, I knew what her response was going to be. Right. Well, that's the problem with a lot of relationships. People get in deep. They're comfortable. They're afraid to get out. And I... I understand. I get it. It takes balls and like, it's tough. Like I hear people getting out of like, like six, seven year relationships at like age 30. And like, I respect it so much. Cause I'm like, that is the right thing to do, but it's really hard. My old roommate got out of a seven year relationship right after I got out of mine. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, dude. That's, it's wild. Uh, it's good. Got to like readjust to the wild. Yeah. And then he like moved home after, which I respect, but boy. Yeah. I would. I was out. I was out. I also ran through all my my uh, acquaintances yeah. pretty quick, which was a mistake. Right. It's like throwing a hamster in the Amazon. It was bad. 
You said, but we're out here. We're we doing acquaintances it. like roster, like friends of friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the other thing is now we're old. Like I'm 30. I just turned 32. Congratulations. So in, in March, so not that recent. Nope, it's May, June. June. It's about to be July, July. on Monday. But just relatively in the grand scheme of things, the Earth's past been around. Year. The Earth's been around for four billion years. I just turned 32. Yeah, well, you're a baby. I just turned 32. Um, and like all my friends are, you know, 28 to 33 range. So a lot of them are wifed up. Yeah. All my best friends, girlfriends, wives, have any friends? Ah, couple. They don't. Not and the ones really. that are left over, let's be honest, not good. Right. And they're probably saying the same thing about us. Hey, <laughs> which is fair. See you out there, huh? Yeah, they're co- yeah they're comedians. They do this foot fetish podcast <laughs> in the Upper East Side. Yeah. yeah. They're all right. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, he's almost at 2,000 subscribers. He's pretty successful. Um, how many listeners do you have weekly? Or a month? However often you just buy weekly or whatever. It's every week. This is episode 194. 194. And we, uh, how many would I say I get a week? 12 to 15 on average, I'd say. Like Listeners? 1, 100, 12 to 1,500. Really? Yeah. Wow, dude. That's a lot. That's why I got Patreon, dude. 12 to People will pay to hear what I say behind closed doors. Wow. Um, how many people are on the Patreon? About 100. Like, wow. Nice, this is what man. happens, dude. When you make a good product consistently, people will uh, yeah, like Yeah, I know. Uh, that's the other thing that's tough about comedy is like there's no tangible progress. Unless it's like... No, zero. Well, there's once in a while, you, maybe if you have a special or... But other than that, there's no tangible progress and you kind of need that to like ground you. Like if you're doing this and you have like... You're making a little money and you're starting to get a following and stuff, that's nice. But... Yeah, but that's why comedy's so tough. There's no like, it's just like helpless, aimless. And I was before you got here. I was talking to the great and powerful Mayo Patel. It's insane. We won't name names on the regular episode, but I got we got friends. They're eating bread for dinner. Yeah, and they're like, but I'm getting the, I'm getting to do Maine, a few bars in Maine next oh, weekend. Dude. I'm like, what? You're 33. I think bar shows like traveling to bar shows is. One of the most depressing things I've ever seen in my life. And they and a lot of comedians make... And listen, I, I might... Maybe I'll do this at some point. Like, when you go on the road. But, like, a lot of comedians will bill it like, I'm going on the road. Like, um, it's my tour. And they'll and make a poster for it. Yeah. And it's like, you're doing, like... You're standing, like, on top of a dumpster behind a CC's doing a show. Like... I actually heard that's yeah. a pretty good gig. Good gig? <laughs> yeah. They pay? They pay. You get dinner. <laughs> It's yeah, the garbage, but whatever. But, uh, yeah, yeah. You just dive into the dumpster after, and you get to take one thing. It's like a treasure chest. This might be a little too inside, uh, but, at least uh, our level of comedy. But we do have a number of fans that like our level of comedy. They've reached out to like, I like this level, oh, which is weird. Yeah, but, but that whole road thing, and but that's all. Uh, this is the other thing. I just got so like grossed out with comedy for a while, like about how people like the promotion, the self promotion. However, an axe, like the whole thing, I just like got grossed out with for a while. And it, that's part of it. It's like all self people like making these tours and like they go to a, a bar in Hartford and like there's eight people there, but they bill it as like, I'm on tour. Well, yeah, what are they supposed to do? Tell you the truth? Yeah. <laughs> so it's all about like making yourself look good. And yeah, I didn't like that part of it for a while. I still don't love it. But well, I also hate, th- I don't like them. The people. I don't like the people. Yeah, a lot of comedians are like, <clears throat> yeah, a lot. I think a lot of comedians are nice, but sure. I don't know. I don't know. It's like annoying. A lot of them are annoying and insecure and weird. And yeah, I don't know. Delusional. Delusional. Um, but yeah, dude, that's. Uh, the bar show things, traveling for bar shows is crazy. And uh, that's what everyone's doing. But not, I'll be in Montreal next weekend. But then I was talking to someone the other... Oh, I ran into Menno. Uh, I haven't seen Menno Shout in... Shout Menno. Love Menno. Shout out Menno Fernandez, dude. I love him. But I hadn't seen him in like probably a couple of years. I saw him at the at the show. There you go. Last week. Show, Mike? And we were just talking... Oh, the mic, yeah, sorry. Okay. And uh, <laughs> thanks for bringing me down to pay. You're welcome. <laughs> Trying to keep you humble there, Tom. <laughs> Oh man, that's good. Shout out Eastville. Uh, no, the comedians on the loose. Yeah. Black cat. Comedians on the loose. Yeah, I mean, I haven't done a mic in five. Damn, you, we're going. I haven't done a mic in five years. You do a. But that one actually. Two thousand eighteen. That one actually, I don't mind because 
uh, there's actually like, I don't know the vibe. Like a lot of mics just depressing. I actually don't mind the vibe in there. It's not as bad. It as has good lighting. Good lighting. It's like a normal. It's not like in a dingy basement. There's a lot of people there usually. Yep. I don't know. Just the vibes better. So I was just like, all right. Like I go to one. At, there's one at Greenwich. Sometimes it's like the most depressing thing I've ever seen in my life. But anyways, I saw Meno and he was like talking about. He was like, yo, I thought like, you and Lu, Lu, you and Louisa should like go on a little tour or something. Because he was like, oh, you guys are both like doing pretty well. You're good friends. We should talk about this whole thing. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I know, but like, would it be worth it, like, money wise? Like, what could I be able to do clubs? And he was like, so we just kind of talked about this exact thing the other day. Yeah. But uh, so maybe I'll end up doing this exact thing. But yeah, all these people are fucking dumb till I do it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, it is unfortunately a lot of it's like social media. But then it's like, like, I have 50. 2,000 followers, but I'm not bragging because, like, that was from, like, maybe, like, 10 viral videos I've had. Whatever. But not a lot from, like... But, it, like, your followers are different than, like, engagement sometimes. Like, you wonder why... I was listening to Tuesdays with Stories the other day. Mark Norman Shout was... Shout out to him. Oh, be- the best podcast. But Mark Norman was like, yeah, I get... He has 1.2 million followers. He said he gets 10,000 story views. Yeah. That's, like, 0.1%. Yep. I get... A couple thousand f- for a 50. And it's like maintaining like it's more than just followers. So like you need that engagement, which is tough to do unless you're like, and I have my special, but I've posted those videos a bunch. And it's like, I feel like you need to do crowd work a lot. Unfortunately, that's how you get or a podcast. But like you need to find a lane. Right. It's you a have lane. to find a niche. Right. Niche, 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 quiche. Kitsch? I love Kitsch. I think all four of those are words. Niche, kitch? niche, Kitsch, Kitsch. <laughs> Someone call us in. Oh, man. Good riff. Yeah, but I don't know. I'm just... I'm, I'm all No, you're right, place. dude. You pick a, pick a lane. Yeah, pick yeah, a lane and stick to it. It's exhausting. But uh, I'm back now. I feel rejuvenated. I feel real, okay, good. Re- refueled. I'm ready to go. Now I like want to do... Spots again, I'm back in it. You're going to do spots, dates. Spots, really dates. The only two things. Yeah. Well, really the only two things I think about. Right. Yeah. Like when I should order Chinese food. I said, well, Ass I, and stand like up. When? Do I get it this week or next week? I think a lot about what ordering kind of takeout. A, now, you got a nice little counter here. Are you cooking ever? Never. See, I'm not a cooker either. I hate cooking. Although I have like this much counter space. My apartment's tiny. Okay. So that's an ex- I use that as an excuse to not cook. Okay. But, um, yeah, I also don't like, especially cooking for one, like you go through all that effort, it takes you eight seconds to eat, and then you're like, it takes you this? 18 minutes to clean up. <laughs> yeah. People that find therapy in cooking are fucking weird. Yeah, I don't. I hate it. And also, like, it is, it is way cheaper. I was going to try and make a point. It's that not, not in the city. Compared well, to I don't a know, Chipotle, could, compared to uh, well, Just Salad, compared to one of those. But you could go to Trader Joe's and get like a bag of rice for $3 and a bunch of grilled chicken for 15 bucks, and that could be like four lunches. But I don't like to tell myself that. That's not true. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> I'm sorry for this mi- misinformation. <laughs> yeah, Can't, put the misinformation here. Don't not believe anything else we said. Don't believe everything you hear on the internet. That was a load of crock of shit that I just said. No, tra- people love Trader Joe's. The ladies love Trader Joe's. I refuse to go. Why? Let's unpack this. No, it's just one, I hate lines. Right, well, you can't go on like a Sunday or Monday. That's chaos. Oh, I feel like you can't go any anytime. It's, cons- it's constantly packed. I, also, yeah. I just get food like... I do you a get delivery? delivery. What do you do? I do a meal delivery service. Drops which, off 15 meals a week. Which right one? Right to my gay door here. <laughs> <laughs> which one? Fresh and lean, dude. Even though we just switched to Factor because Fresh and Lean fucked me. So now we're on Factor, dude. Factor. Okay. I did Sun Basket for a little. That's nice. But you have to make that, don't you? Some, or you can get, there's some packaged. Okay. <laughs> there's another one called Georgie and Tom's. I've been looking into my a doctor record. Like I was... The what? doctor recommended <laughs> somehow like nutrition came up. He was like, "Yeah, I've been getting." Anyways, Georgie and Tom's. Were you at the doctor's office or were you out talking about at, this? And a doctor jumped in. I didn't. It wasn't a run in with a doctor. Okay. I was at a doctor's office. Okay. Um, yeah, your door's pretty gay, by the way. 
Boy. What makes a gay door? Just it always being open? I've been banging it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're having fun, folks. You've been slamming it? Yeah, just porking the door, dude. Just slamming that door? That's where the phrase slam the door comes from. Yeah. They're all gay, yeah. Me banging doors. <laughs> I did just have a very odd encounter. Apparently the woman, uh, uh, like a, she's an older woman. She has dementia, apparently. She's gay. <laughs> she doesn't think she is. <laughs> <laughs> right, sorry, yeah. uh, run! I walk out of my door. Her son, I learned, is right there, covered in hospital bracelets. Oh! And he was like, "Hey, you know, I, my mom lives next door to you." And I'm looking. He's like, he has like injection oh. all over his arms. And he's like, "Yeah, you know, I've been in and out of the hospital." For First time you're meeting these people? Yeah, I was like, I, I don't. I just said, "Hey, best of luck." Put my AirPods in and walked right out the like, door. Well, if you want to come on the podcast, <laughs> I'm like, "Hey, Tom, I don't know what time Tommy's coming over Saturday, so you might, I might need you. I might need you. Leave your Are shoes. Are you working at home. right now? You look like you don't. <laughs> Leave your shoes at home. So you do get a few characters up here on the Upper East Side. This ain't Friday anymore, babe. You've, yeah, you've been going extremes. You're Upper East, Fidei. Um, How do you like it compared to Fidei? I hate it. Really? Yeah. You hate it up here? Good gym. I like the gym. It's so clean and calm up here. Too, it's too, too slow. slow. See, that's why I like being in the mix in Greenwich Village. Yeah. But I get a nice apartment, <clears throat> relatively. Right. I found my... I would not be able to afford where I live, but I somehow found a good deal in a place. But, of course, if everyone could live, live in West Village, they would, or... Maybe, of course. Maybe, I don't know. But I like it up here. It's like my sisters are on like eight blocks down, so I come up here here and there. So I'll let you know. I forgot you moved up here. Let me know. We'll hit a stumble in. We'll hit a stumble in up here. Dorian's stumble in. I used to go to Dorian's a lot with my buddy, James Carcietta. Shout out James Carcietta. You don't listen to the pod. JC. We used JK? to go out to Dorian's a lot, but he doesn't drink, so it's not that fun. Now he doesn't drink or he never drink? Uh, for the past few years. Two, three years. What is it? No offense to... Was his name Jake? James? Uh, James. No offense to J-Bone, but what is it with people? I mean, we've always had, it's always been a thing with, like, the comedians we came up with. I feel like it was people, like, drinking started going out of style when we were, like, coming into comedy. Like, yeah. it wasn't that raucous, like, rebel, like, rock and roll lifestyle that you hear about comedians and musicians, all that kind of stuff live. It was very different. It was very different. And, like, people are starting to stop drinking Nowadays, I, and especially at our age, a lot of people are quitting. My, th- I am. Pr- I think if you have a drinking problem, you should fine quit. Like if you are an animal, when you get drunk, you can't stop drinking. You have a legit alcohol problem. Stop drinking. But these people who are just like, I, it's like a little bit of like a virtue signal. I think where they're like, I'm just don't drink. Like you can have a few beers here and there. You know, if you don't have a problem. That's what annoys, like, is weird I'm, to me. I'm following, all, yeah. First off, if you have a drinking problem, I'm a little old school, deal with it. Yeah, right. You know? You're like, oh, I drink too much, and then I'll, you know, I'll piss in a girl's bed. Find a new girl. I don't know. <laughs> like, let's move on, you know? Figure that out. Find a new girl. We'll take your sheets. <laughs> yeah. Oh, actually, as a matter of Rich fact. Rich will take your sheets. Don't throw those out. <laughs> but these people... That are just... It's like you can for, have fun. It's like, oh, it's for my health. I'm like, you're hitting a vape right now. Right. That's the other thing. It's like, what else are you putting into your body? Also, you're going to die one day. Like, have some fun. Right. Fun fact, 100% of people die. Right. People well, don't talk about that. Not that fun, but it's a fact. It is. A, well, <laughs> depends who you are. Right. Everyone's dying out there. So Fun if you're depressed. Shout out to It's comics. a fun fact if you're depressed. Everyone dies. Everyone dies. No, and it's... Especially if you're on the... Uh, we're going back to the ass, but it's been most of my life the past few weeks... You ever see it says, like, drink sometimes? Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, does I think it it's people who drink, drink but they don't want people to think. Like, like just a hard yes sounds aggressive. Like, the yes. That's what I, that's what I read. I'm like, yes. Oh, so I, I drink. So people, will, I think people might want to, like, soften the blow a little bit. Like, yeah, I drink sometimes, but they probably drink regularly. But it's just a, the people but it's stop drinking. regularly also. Once a week. I, this is all go subjective. A couple drinks a week. Couple of drinks a couple of days a week, maybe. Couple of drinks a couple. Of like days you go out a couple different days and have a handful of drinks. I don't know. Okay. Maybe again, I'm an alcoholic. Who knows? But what? Yeah. What's a handful? Also, Hands but I know people sizes. who drink. I don't know. Well, for guys, I think. Like, what's the minimum amount of drinks you'd have? If I was like, hey, what we're gonna 
We're gonna go out. We're gonna hit uh, like going out. Uh, or like we're gonna go to. Uh, I'm thinking of a day thing right now in the West Village. We're gonna go to Galway Hooker. Hey Tom, Spaniard. let's hit Galway Hooker. Oh wow, you're still doing Spaniard. No, but I was just okay. Well, Galway is just as youthful and. Uh, I haven't been to him in about five years. Yeah, neither have <laughs> yeah, I. I don't know. But uh, like if you're going out during the day, here's my thing. I don't drink. Because I like the taste of alcohol. If I drink, I'm like going. I'm doing it to get drunk. Right. So like, I'm. I don't like having one or two drinks. To me, there's no. I don't point. dislike it, but I'm like, I, like I don't drink with dinners usually because I've had always had bad like stomach problems. So I'm like, I get full. So if I'm going out to dinner and like not going out after, I don't get beers. Really, I've been off the beers. I have been off beers. I hear tequila is the big play. I've been tequila, doing tequila sodas. It's by far the healthiest alcohol, apparently. That's what they say. That's Yeah, that's what tequila says. Yeah. So I was like, all right. Well, that's good. Wow, how convenient for them. Yeah. <laughs> what a coincidence. I'll buy all of it. But back, just one more comment about the people stop drinking. It's just a buzzkill. It's just kind of a buzzkill. I don't know who you to know hang what I mean? with anymore. Just everyone in general always talking. It's on TikTok and social media, too. Everyone's always talking like, I've taken six months off drinking. It's like, you're a buzzkill. Oh, you're, you're a nerd. You're anxious when you, the next day. You know what helps with that? Alcohol, More dude. alcohol. Why don't you have another fucking drink? Yeah, fucking stop relax. being a little pussy about <laughs> it. Yeah. Oh, you're anxious? Have a drink. Oh, you drove into a tree? Have another drink. Call an Uber, you dumb bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're switching sounds to the like Patreon. Need, sounds like you need some meth to even you out a little. The, now, these are ideas. <laughs> I, had, I was on a big shrooms kick last summer. Oh, shrooms are the about. best. Shrooms are the best. Right, we're going to switch to Patreon. I also got to take a piss. Here we go. Uh, 